Most of the time, when a team rolls out into a Rainmaker match, the first thing they're going to try to do is get to the middle of the map as quickly as possible so they can pop the Rainmaker shield. Should we really be doing that, though? It's important to question assumptions about the game like this whenever we identify them, because sometimes they're just based on whatever everyone else does. And if there's one thing I've learned about human beings, it's that even though we're the most intelligent species on the planet, except for maybe penguins, we can't always be counted on to be right about something, even if a lot of us have thought about it. The Rainmaker Pop does a few things for your team. Firstly, it creates a massive lethal explosion that will splat any opponents who get too close to it. This isn't something to underestimate for sure. Sometimes you'll get a random splat just for managing to pop the shield. Or wipe the entire enemy team. You never really know. But stronger players tend not to get caught out by this nearly as often, as they know the shield's range, and they also know how to recognize when they're not going to win the pop and stay back from it preemptively. At higher levels, what's more important than the explosion is the paint it puts down. Sometimes the Rainmaker explosion paints a lot. That paint lets your team instantly gain access to areas past mid, and, just as importantly, whoever gets credit for popping the shield gets credit for all that paint in their special gauge, usually charging their special for them immediately. But not all maps give you the same benefit for popping the shield. While the explosion may be the same size, the map geometry makes the paint land in different ways, and sometimes there's just not as much around the shield that it's going to paint. An alternative to popping the Rainmaker shield that's pretty common in competitive play is to fan out in different directions and paint your own side of the map near mid so you have room to move and you have special charge by the time the enemy team pops it. Sometimes teams will resort to this when they recognize that their weapons don't have the ability to deal more damage to the Rainmaker shield than the other team. If you've got two blasters on your team, and the other team has a Double Bomb Jr., a Blob Lobber, and a set of Dapple Doolies, unless you move to mid way faster and pop the shield before they ever reach it, you've got no chance to beat their popping power and you might as well give it up. What I'm showing you right now are clips of popping the Rainmaker shield on every map in the game, so you can see the explosion without having to worry about the chaos of a Splatoon match happening around it. Think, for instance, about the size of the explosion and what ground it covers. Is it useful to have that ground covered, or could you do without it? Another very useful property of how big the explosion is, is how much special charge the player who pops the shield is awarded for all the paint that goes down from it. In all of these clips, I do the best I can to avoid painting as I approach the shield, and to only paint my feet in places that the Rainmaker explosion would have ended up painting over anyway. The splatter shot needs 200p for special, so you can estimate how much each pop paints by just looking at how much the special gauge fills up. Just painting top mid here, definitely not worth. You need the ground underneath it to really be able to move around and control this mid area. Here, for example, you can see that all of mid is painted, and so that allows you to move to anywhere on the map that you want. That's a lot more useful, as is this here. While it's up on a pedestal and it's not going to reach as far because of that, it paints all of the spaces in between the places where you want to go in mid, and that's something that makes it worthwhile. Here, you can probably do without it, because it doesn't stretch all the way out into mid, and there's a lot of room around it that you can work with. Most of it goes on to top mid, which you're only going to want to go to if you're trying to pick up the Rainmaker already, which means you already have an advantage. This one is one that, that surprised me uh, more than most. This is definitely not worth. This doesn't paint an awful lot, and the places that it does paint are really, really dangerous to be standing. So again, you're only going to go there if you've already got an advantage you're trying to pick the Rainmaker up. Inkblot, though, definitely worthwhile. There's a whole ton of space that it takes up in mid, and mid is really important because you have to pass through here on your way to either goal, whether you're on offense or defense. Really, really useful to get that particular pop. On Mahi, it's also very much worth. This is a very small map, and so the pop takes up almost the entire width of the map. Um, hugely important for getting any kind of map control there, especially for how much paint it puts behind the pieces of cover you have to work with. Undertow, you can take or leave. There's a lot of space to move around the, the pop here. There's not an awful lot that it paints on either of the sides, which is where you really need to be moving around. Um, if you're going up to mid, that again means that you're already probably under control of the Rainmaker. But... It's not a bad amount of paint. It can be useful still. I just wouldn't prioritize it too much. Wahoo, I did twice. The first time I did it with the bridges up so we could see if the paint goes anywhere near them. And 
it's just a little bit of a light sprinkle onto the bridges. It really doesn't make a huge difference there. So the only thing you're really getting either way when you pop it is all of mid. And mid is nice to have, but mid is also a really dangerous place to be. You've got to move through it, but you really only want to move through it when you have an advantage. And so, like other maps, probably also someplace you only want to be going through if you've already got control of the Rainmaker. Hopefully that gave you a little bit better of an idea of what kind of thought process goes through a competitive team when they're trying to decide whether they really want to contest this pop or whether it's better for them to just paint someplace else on the map and get specials and get paint control in preparation for the fight over the Rainmaker.